doctors are really looking. Yeah, we've had quite a few come in, I know, to our center um, and actually interview the students right there. Uh, they'll, they'll have the kids sit down with the resume that they pre prepared. Some will even have uh, a portfolio together with some of the pictures and things like that. And we've had some people from industry come in and actually speak to the students directly and are, are looking to place them as soon as uh, they graduate. So. so we've had kids right out of high school, right into the employment field, and they're jobs that are sustainable jobs. I mean, they're jobs that th these students can go out and get an apartment and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, buy a car and, and really get going. These are not the jobs that you find, you know, most. flipping hamburgers or something like that. No disrespect to hamburgers. I'm finding, I'm finding that most of our students right out of our programs are making somewhere in the, most of them with, with a decent skill set are making 12 to $14 an hour to start, um, which is not, not bad and they don't have any debt, any college debt or anything like that. When they leave us, they're ready to go right into they're the They're ready to go right to work. I was Twelve actually, to fourteen yeah, dollars an hour. That's about average, and that's Orleans County. So, so you're talking um, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars a year. Twenty-four thousand to twenty-eight thousand. Yeah, probably with start. some medical benefits. There's usually some benefits. Yeah. Most of the companies are pretty good about that. Boy, um, you can move out of mom and dad's basement yeah. for that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, or bank some money I, if mom and dad will allow you. Yeah, yeah, and get and then go on either up through the rank. Or maybe take some courses in two, four-year college. and We recommend that often, too. If you're not sure about college right now, bank some of that money. Mm -hmm. And then maybe down the road, you know, pay cash for a class. You know, take advantage of that so you'll know, so you won't put yourself in debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, with, with worrying so much about jobs, you know, hearing what you guys are saying, that a student, two years, all right, half a year junior, half a year senior, still get your Regents degree, get this and be employable day one. I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely huge. Let's look at another picture. What do we have for the next one? This is that wall. It's, it's, it's nearing completion here. Um, it actually goes just under the, uh, the trusses that hold up the roof. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just stayed a few inches below that. That is a big wall, roof, uh, too, big ceilings. I don't remember the dimensions, but it's, it's probably 30 feet long. Uh, and it ends up being almost like a T-shape off mm -hmm. of there. Uh, and it's worked tremendously to cut down on, on a lot of the, the superficial noise that might happen in a regular cl uh, classroom setting. Okay, and what's happening here? this is here? Uh, one of Jake's here. This is a, another block wall. However, this was uh, out off, off site. Um, the, the Orleans Career Center students, uh, my, my students, we do quite a bit of work for Orleans County Habitat for humanity as well as doing some additional work for Orleans Community Action. So we try to get them out in the field. Um, the last couple of years we've been working with, with Habitat for Humanity on some larger long-term projects where we're finding that uh, the students tend to like the short-term projects, that the quick two-week, three-week, uh, even, even shorter than that, sometimes one-week programs or, or projects where we're building wheelchair ramps or um, making people's bathrooms handicapped accessible. Somebody's coming home from the hospital and they actually they can't get into their house or once they get in they they need some modifications to their homes and and we're kind of trying to focus future work on those types of projects but we try to get the students out at least uh, at least once per quarter for for a short-term project at this point to give them some very much real-world experience where they can really see what, what happens when you pull away from the classroom and, and you have to deal with adverse conditions such as weather or a crowded house or barking dog when you're trying to work, just all kinds of things that, that you come across. Keep that you the can't door shut so the colonel doesn't get out. That's right, that's right. <laughs> the that commercial you, is on yeah, TV. That you can't simulate in the classroom. It gives them a chance to work on soft skills too, how you approach people, residents, how you work. Um, I remember the good old days when you'd hire someone to come in and it, it I used to just shudder because there was such a mess when, when everything was done. And it seems to me now that folks that work on houses and that are much more attuned to that. They're, you know, they come in, they do the job, there's no mess. It's just, it's, it's a different world of professionalism out there than it was that I remember when, you know, when I was much younger mm -hmm. and that. So there's a whole lot that goes with that of understanding the, I don't know, if you want to call it the aesthetics of working in someone's house. Well, the, the advantage that we have is we all came from the trade area, so we know exactly how to prepare these students to, to actually do these soft skills in, you mm -hmm. know, in the real world. 
and that's one of the things that you know that we stress upon at least at all, both our centers I know that um, having my own business uh, prior to, to teaching um, as well as these guys uh, so it's one of the nice things that we're trying to have these you know skills that these students can actually take the ball and run with it uh, once they're done with our program all right observations that you've had what brings kids in what what gets their attention about coming into this program I think the fact that it's it's not like a traditional classroom setting you know we spend a good 15 20 minutes in the beginning of class often in the middle I mean there's so many teaching moments but we're not we're not drilling the kids with the lecture the chance that they have um, to be able to take advantage of you know their natural abilities and being able to work with their hand and explore so many you know different opportunities that's I think that's the biggest hook give me some wood give me some fasteners I'm ready to go mm -hmm. um, so you know we'll cast them out sometimes we have to reel them back in to make sure everything's done well and done right but the <clears throat> the fact that they actually have that opportunity um, you know get some theory so they understand applications and then go um, it's a real nice break it's a real nice break from the norm one of the things that I've noticed too in career and skills, we don't seem to have the gender specific roles in trades. We're getting girls into welding. We've had guys come into the cosmetology and nursing and what have you. Are you finding that with building trades? Well, I know have I you can experienced speak. It? I have a junior uh, that will be coming back as a senior, um, and she, uh, she, it's just phenomenal to see how well she picks up things. Um, she uh, is one of the most talented in the class and I really think she'll be going to compete um, and I think she's going to do very well in some of the trade areas that we talked about with uh, you know like as Jake is going on to Skills USA Nationals um, but there's also the regional and state uh, competitions and I think she's going to be at that and we have several students um, in the past that uh, have been female students of mine that have gone on I know one went into the military and she actually drives heavy equipment for the mm -hmm. military um, so we've had a lot of success stories with that so uh, it's it's great um, to have the the females in class because there's such a demand uh, for you know we have um, Randy Palladino is the head of the laborers and he he's stressing we need to have more females in this industry because you know there's women business uh, WBA or WBE uh, women business enterprise mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot of the the females that can really um, have they already have those soft skills and things like that so yeah. much much more people are, are men and women have different perspectives on things right you know? and you, you we notice that with men and women doctors or anything else so I would I would think that there would be that same opportunity here but yeah I can I can understand how people would be real sensitive maybe you know to having having a female carpenter or a female mm -hmm. person sure. come in to work in their house may feel more comfortable with someone like that it's a good place for kids and it's a good place for kids to start a career are we let's see this is June we still have time for enrollment don't we, we kids can still go to BOCES if they want to mm -hmm. you know it's not like it's a closed thing sometimes you think that well it's after the school year you everything's carved in stone but if someone were interested they still could contact school or yep. or BOCES and, and still look at it yeah for that this information's year. on our website um, at onboces.org mm -hmm. and uh, they can just thumb through and, and look at some of the the course offerings uh, building trades is what the course is called but one mm -hmm. of the other things that I wanted to talk about is the uh, opportunity for advanced uh, credit. Uh, we, we actually get uh, an opportunity for some kids that take advantage of uh, t getting up to six credit hours to Erie Community, uh, the city campus, okay. and three credit hours to the north campus uh, if they meet the, the criteria. So we're basically adjunct um, Erie Community professors. Uh, so they can earn college credit while? They can earn while? college credit in our programs. Okay. So that's certainly something that they should consider. Uh, and we also offer, you know, um, a math, an English, and a science credit as well. So, so they're, not, like advanced, they're not going to lose those things. It's like know, advanced school. placement, but for skilled trades. Yes, okay. very similar to that. Relationship with the college is like we do. And and I got to stress again, they're still getting their regents degrees. Yes. You know, we have the extra push-in programs that mm -hmm. make sure that that math, science, English are all accented. Yeah, they would at, actually the, get, get a career in tech. They could get a technical endorsement on their regents diploma. Um, from our program. 
Okay. Now, do we have state or do we have national certification with this program? I know some of our programs have a national certification or something. They're taking a national uh, certification test. It's it's actually I don't think it's a certification. It would be a yeah, a skills, like an endorsement. A skills USA. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're, we're involved in in some national certification uh, programs. We have a uh, an Energy Star program that both uh, both Matt and I uh, have have implemented. That's th that uh, is sort of a stepping stone to uh, BPI, which is a Building Performance Institute. It's a it's a stepping stone to the Building Performance Institute certification. Uh, I use a, a curriculum that uh, is is a nationally recognized. I think I think both of us yep. use nationally recognized uh, curriculums, and we and we do do um, implement things that are that are associated with the National Association of Home Builders, and mm -hmm. everything that we do is is with with an eye on you know trying to get kids either certified or certifiable, so that they can go on and get some additional. Um, Credits or or certifications from from their experience at, through our programs. Boy, it's there's a lot to absorb, but the bottom line to me is there are jobs out there for these kids right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're home and you're in ninth grade or tenth grade or even coming into eleventh grade this year, this is something you know you can be out there working, taking care of yourself in two years. That to me is pretty in this day and age. Is, right. is pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. And at a time where, like I said, you think about housing, you kind of wonder, you don't see a lot of new houses going up. You think that there's not, and yet you're telling me there's a huge demand for these folks mm -hmm. and they can't find enough of them. Well, I know in our area alone, like Wheatfield's one of the largest growing districts and so is Star Point. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of houses still being built out there and uh, they're definitely, we have a, you know, a gentleman on our advisory committee that did um, the extreme home makeover in Buffalo Dave Stapleton from David Holmes. Mm -hmm. um, he sits on our craft committee, and he oh, he's wow. basically, you know, can't wait for students to be able to finish to go and uh, be able to help him out. So his. you're not linked up with just the Niagara County area. You're linked up with the all Western New York employment agencies and the people in business that mm -hmm. are that are looking for these kids. So it's not something where they've got to stay right in Niagara County. They've got work in this whole yeah. surrounding area that can sure. be done. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What, what does a parent need to know before they either say yes or no for a student to come to, to look um, at one of these programs? Contact any one of us. Um, we'll, we'd be happy to meet you out at the center, give you a nice little tour, meet some of the other um, instructors, bring your child out with you. Don't be afraid to call your homeschool counselor and ask mm -hmm. a few more questions. Again, navigate maybe through our website. Don't close the door on it because I just think if your kid's on the fence, You'd be surprised at some of the wonderful options we have out there. Right. It's something to look at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing, I, I mean, I, college is ridiculously expensive, you know, and, and it's a, such a huge investment. If you can be working while you're doing something, or if you can obtain that same skill while you're here, and look at the projects you guys have done. You're really involved in the community. You're getting them out there so that they see the whole broad spectrum of opportunities that are available, and they're learning to do it safely. Mm -hmm. They're learning to do it safely. On that. Any other advice that you'd have for someone that is thinking about a career in building trades? Well, one of the things I stress with my students, it, it might not be the avenue for you, you know, for life, mm -hmm. but you're probably going to own a home or maybe your parents, you know, you're always going to have work and you will always be able to, to uh, you know, make some money along the way. Maybe it puts you through college, maybe it puts you to the next career. Um, but certainly the skills are something it's we can't take away from It's a great thing to do on you. the weekends if you're, right. you know, after kids come and you're looking for those extra dollars for the things you didn't have before right. and that. And it saves you a lot of money when you're in a home. I can attest to that with, <laughs> with stuff that my hubby has done. Okay, any final words? We're down to one minute. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time out to be here. I know it's the end of the year and you've got a lot of stuff to get done uh, to get the centers closed up and, and things put away and ready for next year and that. Uh, so I want to thank you for that. Jake, you're going on with students to uh, Kansas City. Kansas City, yep. We leave Sunday morning. So for a busy four days, the students will be competing in the Teamworks competition, which is, again, a comprehensive uh, competition where the, a group of four will compete in plumbing, masonry, carpentry, and electrical and try to show off their skills and compete against, uh, last year I think there were 38 teams in the team from Orleans, the Orleans Center. Are these Center students six. juniors or seniors this year? There are uh, three seniors and one junior going. Okay. So 
our best of luck to you. I've been out to Kansas City and it is a fantastic place and the kids are just wonderful. So.